welcome to the Wasiliana Hub uh, convening. And this is a convening for mediation service center leaders in Kenya, where we are receiving their views on the Civil Procedure Act, that's CAP 21, Court Annex Mediation Rules 2020, a document which we refer to as the Kenya post naivasha Mediation Rules Draft 1, um, circulated on 15th of January 2021. And the purpose of the circulation is for mediators to read and to give open feedback. Mediation Service Center leaders are giving their review of the Kenya post naivasha Draft uh, 1 of the Court Annex Mediation Rules 2020. Today is on the sixth day of February in the year 2020, and we have Jessilo Conflict Resolution, who will be giving us a review of the document. The review covers contributions, critique, and construct, looking at what's effective, what should not be in it, what's missing, and also a general value add contribution. We will start off with the words of the national anthem, Wimbo wa Taifa, that is in Kiswahili. E mungu nguvu yetu, ilete baraka kwetu, haki iwe ngao na mlinzi, na tukai na undugu, amani na uhuru, raha tupate na ustawi. My name is Wangari Kabiru, and I welcome you to this session hosted by Wasiliana Hub as part of the convening, of the convenings for mediation and resolution centers in Kenya, where today we have mediation service center leaders giving us a review of the Kenya post naivasha draft one court annexed mediation rules 2020. Today we have Jessilo conflict resolution, and I wish to invite Jessilo conflict resolution. Good evening to you. Good evening to you. Good evening. Yes, and wel you. welcome. Welcome. I wish to invite you to please uh, give an introduction of yourself. Please let us know about Jessilo conflict resolution, and then you may proceed to give your review um, and contributions to the ongoing discussion. Karibu sana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wangari. Uh, this is a Jessilo conflict resolution center. My name is uh, Fred Kamiti. Uh, I'm a director at the same center that is the Silo Conflict Resolution Center, a center that deals with uh, a resolution of conflicts. We also deal with the training of mediators. Uh, we also offer uh, separate services uh, as long as the services are dealing with any ADR matters that is alternative dispute resolution. So that is what uh, the CILO Conflict Resolution Center is all about. And uh, now I'm going to give uh, a little brief on uh, what uh, the document is all about, the document that we are uh, looking at today, that is the, the mediation rules, that is post Naivasha mediation rules that we had recently. And we are going to maybe to attempt to generate value by adding uh, our contribution to the court annexed mediation rules. We shall explore what we, we perceive as effective in this document. We shall also explore uh, on the rules items that we feel need to be amended and maybe what, what else should be added in the documents. So we shall uh, explore uh, what is uh, what we feel is positive or what we feel uh, will come on the side of the pros rather than the cons. And we shall be looking on how this document will able to help us uh, and how and what actually should be added to the document if anything uh, is amiss according to us. So we shall, I shall go straight to the documents. Uh, and uh, I am going to start with the positives that we have found in the document. Actually, uh, I love the major. I love uh, quite a document. A good document, according to us. And uh, actually, 
Uh, if there is anything that is missing, if there is anything that we need corrected, then I don't think it is too much. So I think I'm going to have more positives than the negatives. And according to me, that's how the document looks like, according to me. Now, let us look at part B of the document. Uh, and we are going to start with rule five, number three, which, uh, which states that a court before which a suit is pending, a determination may at any stage before final judgment refer it to mediation. So I found this to be quite, uh, quite positive because it gives uh, the parties quite a big window, quite a big window because uh, mediation uh, can come in any time or a suit can be referred to mediation any time uh, from when it initiates to the time uh, it ends actually be just before the judgment. Mediation can come in any time. And when, when I combine it with, uh, when I combine it with uh, rule five, number four, then uh, it states that parties may, may by consent request uh, the court to refer their case to mediation. So we feel that in order for a case to be referred to mediation, uh, the, that window is not only left to, to the registry, but also to the parties, if they can be able to consent. And that is a very, uh, very positive uh, thing, especially to, to the parties so that we don't have their hands tied that their case can only be referred to, to the mediation by only a, registration, a registry officer. Uh, when we look at uh, rule number six, which quotes the procedure, the procedure on screening, then uh, when we look at number three of rule six, it states where the screening officer makes a finding that the file is not suitable to be referred to mediation, uh, he shall endorse on the file the reason for his findings. So we find uh, when, when the screening is being done, then this uh, registration officer must give a reason for not taking a file to the registry. So uh, here we find that their hands are tied and he can just not ignore a file uh, without uh, stating or endorsing a reason for not taking this file. Uh, or referring this file to mediation. So that's another positive uh, item that we, we got there. And uh, actually uh, it gives us confidence that all the files that need to be referred to mediation shall be referred to mediation. And that the files that are not being referred to mediation, then uh, there is uh, quite a good reason for not taking these files uh, to mediation. Uh, the other rule that we found to be positive in this document is rule number eight. Actually, rule num uh, number two, H and I of rule number eight, that states that uh, the file shall contain names and contacts uh, of the of the of the parties and their representatives. Uh, we find that this is where a majority of the mediators were getting stuck because uh, these files were coming in without especially the names of the parties. But now the rules are given that provision that uh, the files have to come in with the, with the names and the contacts of the parties, which, has, which is a very good plus to the mediators because uh, a majority of the mediators were getting quite a rough time uh, getting the contacts of the parties from especially the advocates who are representing, uh, representing them. Uh, we have had so much complaint on this. And uh, now that it, is, it has come to be a rule, then I think after the rule has been gazetted, uh, that will be quite in order with the, that will be quite in order with the mediators. Uh, the other, the other positive that we found in the document is rule number 15. And that is number three of rule number 15 on the attendance at the mediation. That is the attendance of mediation, which states that uh, the personal details and role of the representatives shall be dis disclosed to all parties at the first meeting, which I, find, I found to be very, very important because uh, a majority of the mediators 
uh, when they're, they are starting the mediation process or the facilitation, then you find a majority of us are just starting the process without actually defining the roles, especially the roles of the advocate. Uh, so we should define the role, especially the role of the advocate or any other representative so that uh, they can also be aware uh, about their boundaries so that they cannot just cross the boundaries, you know, because even uh, as far as we assume that a majority of lawyers or other representatives know their role in a mediation process, it's not a majority of them who know their roles. So it is the duty of the mediator to define these roles and also to define uh, the mediator's role and the party's roles in a mediation process, which is very, very important. And that one has been uh, given as a provision in uh, rule number 15. And that one actually, I'm going to attach it with uh, rule number 20, where the role of an advocate uh, at the mediation has been defined. I'm not going to go deep into that because it's already stated there in uh, rule number 20. So uh, the mediators should actually be able to internalize uh, rule number 20 so that when defining the role of the mediator, they can uh, be able actually uh, to, to explain it as it is in uh, rule number 20. So uh, rule number 22 on consequences for non-compliance. That one was a very, very good class uh, in that document, which states that parties or their representatives may be uh, cited uh, for contempt of, of court when uh, they become non-compliant. And I think uh, non-compliance may either be non-attendance or maybe on uh, how or, or how they can interfere with the mediation process. That uh, that one shall be deemed as non-compliance, and it is punishable uh, by law. So now that it has been stated in Rule Number Twenty Two, we have found it to be uh, a very very clear indication that uh, that the mediators shall not be having all these problems of non-compliance because we have been having it. Uh, and when I, I join it with the, with, with the number, with number 15, where we have to have the details of the parties, then you find that uh, the non-compliance will not uh, be, be there so much. Uh, when I skip to, to, part, uh, to part C, that is part C on registration, recognition, uh, and enforcement of private mediation agreements. Uh, we find in this document that comprises of the largest part, which is a very, very good plus to the mediators because a majority of the mediators uh, have been wondering uh, how shall we be able to practice privately, apart now from the courts, uh, mandated uh, mediation. And actually it has opened uh, a very big door to the mediators because uh, when after the bill has been uh, gazetted, then we find that uh, mediators will be able now to practice privately as long as uh, a mediator is qualified. And that is where we must define the difference between accreditation and qualification because uh, when uh, a mediator is qualified, then he does not actually really need to be to be attached to the court mandated uh, court annexed mediation. He can do the practice alone, uh, either by joining bodies like the Nairobi Center for International Arbitration, uh, by joining bodies like the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, then you find that uh, we can be able even to open up uh, individual offices and practice mediation. And that was what we were actually lacking. Now the bill has come up very, very clearly uh, in rule number 38, which states that, uh, that a private uh, mediation agreement reached by parties with the, assistant, with the assistance of a qualified mediator may be presented at the mediation registry for purposes of registration and adoption. So we find 
uh, you don't have to be now given a case uh, to handle, a mediation case to handle uh, only from the uh, court annex registry, but you can actually be able to handle a case privately and get it adopted uh, in the court of law. So that one is a very, very big plus. And actually I found that was the longest, longest, uh, longest uh, when it came to the mediation rules because uh, it actually starts from rule number 36 to rule number 44. And it is actually uh, very clearly stated. So that is a plus to the mediators actually it was long overdue because we really needed to practice it without, without, uh, without so much of thinking of the court annex mediation. Because uh, with the experience a majority of us are having, uh, there are so many challenges uh, with the court annex mediation. A majority as, uh, may be uh, finding it, uh, the payments are coming in late. Uh, and again, uh, the cases for mediation are very slim. They are not, uh, they don't have a big opening. Uh, we, were, we were quite shocked because since Nakuru uh, court was launched for the, for the court and its mediation, that was quite some time back and only 27 cases have been given out to mediators. And that is the reason why we must now uh, open this window for private mediation. That is very, very important. Actually, uh, we were waiting for that and now it has come with the bill and uh, with, the, with, with the rules and which is very, very important. Number 39 states that requirements for the registration uh, of a private mediation agreement. And then uh, we find it also talks about the private mediation. So, uh, that one uh, actually, personally, it made me amused. The last one uh, I found uh, to be a plus in the mediation rules was uh, rule number 33. Rule number 33 uh, now deals with the immunity that is being given to a mediator because uh, we have to actually really know that now we are working in the corridors of the courts. What, what immunity does the judiciary give us? And then it is stated in uh, rule number 33 that a mediator in respect to mediation, to mediation proceedings shall enjoy the same protection and immunity as that granted to judicial officers and judges. So we find that the immunity that uh, is enjoyed by the, by the judicial officers and the judges, uh, it has been again now been handed to, to the mediators, which is a very, very good plus, so that we don't see ourselves as if uh, we have just been left out without being given any protection by, by the judiciary. And that was a, a very, a very good plus, actually. Now, that is all uh, that I had uh, looked in uh, as far as uh, the positivities of these uh, uh, rules are concerned. So uh, I just found a little negative things, uh, according to me, to do with the mediation rules, and especially at part B of the rules. And that is rule number seven, uh, the screening criteria. And so rule number seven states that the court shall develop a screening criteria to be used by all screening, uh, by all screening officers. The criteria shall take into account uh, B, the value and nature of the subject matter. I think uh, when I, I relate that to the remunerations that are being given uh, to mediators, that is court annexed mediation, then I feel if uh, the cases shall be, the cases shall be, by, shall be screened in a criteria that, uh, where the value and the nature of the, the subject matter shall be looked into, then we find uh, there should be, there should be a clause whereby the remuneration should go together with the value of uh, that particular mediation. 
because uh, like uh, like I had one of us say uh, some other day, uh, when you're handling a case that is worth maybe about two billion, and then uh, the remuneration uh, stays to be uh, on a very low note by the judiciary, then I think it is not fair to the mediation. Then uh, that rule for for the uh, for the screening criteria should come hand in hand with the remuneration now uh, of the mediators, and actually that is what should guide them on how they should be uh, remunerating the mediators. Uh, and when we look at D, uh, that states whether the case is a public is a public interest litigation or one which raises issues of public concern, then I find they have not actually substantiated so well on what they mean with that particular rule because, uh, sorry for that, uh, because uh, they have not actually defined uh, uh, whether a case, if a case is a public interest litigation, should it uh, go to, to mediation? Should it re be referred to mediation? Or should it remain uh, at the litigation? They have not actually defined. The, it has only been stated that uh, one of the screening criteria is whether the case is a public interest litigation or one which raises issues of public concern. But they have not actually defined uh, how uh, a case that is subject to, to public interest, where should it go? Should it, go to, uh, should it remain at litigation or should it go to mediation? So that was also a concern. And actually, I was trying to relate it to, to the case we had, I believe, in 2007, where Kofi Annan came. Uh, this was a case that was quite of uh, public interest, but it was given to mediation. So actually, that is a point to look at. It doesn't mean that where, when a case is of public interest, it should remain at litigation. We had the case of the doctors versus the government that was handled by, uh, by OHAGA. And we find that uh, it was also of a great public interest and it was handled through mediation. So uh, that one is a point of correction that should be made uh, to that particular rule number 7D. Rule number 37, which deals with payment of mediators. Uh, number two, it, uh, it states that the scale of payment of mediator fees should be determined by the committee and shall be revised from time to time. But then uh, it's a feeling that uh, it, that, uh, that rule is not actually quite complete because they should actually define on how they shall be determining the payments or the remuneration. Is it uh, uh, what criteria they, they are going to follow? It should be neatly explained. And if I, uh, if I can be allowed to go back to number 7B, where now uh, the rule is talking of the screen, one of the screening criteria to be the value and nature of the subject matter, then that one, uh, they should have put it together with the payment of mediators and say that uh, maybe uh, we shall pay according to the value of the case, but this is the minimum. They could, they could actually give the minimum maybe to be what they usually pay, but now, uh, above board, they should actually be able to raise according to according to the value of the case. Uh, so that one was another was another uh, item that we found should be rectified. Uh, now, uh, what is missing in this document? That is uh, my closing. Uh, that is my closing shot. Uh, when I look at uh, what is missing, uh, then uh, we found that there should be a minimum number of cases uh, that should be screened within a set period of time. We should know within one month, then that particular station should screen a certain number of cases. Now, without doing that, then we are leaving it uh, open to the to the uh, to the uh, registry officers to register even very uh, minor or meager number of cases 
you find uh, that is why the cases now are not being screened enough because uh, we believe at least 80% of the cases are fit to go to mediation because the cases that are not suitable for mediation are very, very few, uh, like the capital offenses, uh, like the, the Sexual Offenses Act, those ones should not go to mediation, but we believe a majority of the civil cases, uh, the majority that are there in the, uh, in the, in the courts. So, um, so many cases should be screened each month, including a certain set number of cases uh, that should be disbursed to mediators. So we, we believe in maybe giving an example of the Nakuru court, which is already operational as a court annexed center. Then uh, the Nakuru court annexed uh, mediator should know that this month uh, they are supposed to disperse a certain number of cases in that particular in that particular center. Uh, and that one, uh, we found it to be missing. Number two, the rules should be, the rules uh, should have mandated a mediation kitty within the uh, judiciary budget. We don't uh, right now have a, a mediation kitty in their budget. And uh, so whatever remains after them, uh, after them using the budget, that is what they use to pay the mediators. And that is, uh, that is very, uh, no, it's not correct because uh, court annexed mediation is constitutional, then it should, they should have a budget for it because it has all uh, it has been actually been absorbed by the judiciary. So we find uh, the mediation not being given their own kitty, that is not in order. So that one should have come into the rules again. Uh, they should actually have substantiated on how uh, on how uh, the mediation kitty, budget kitty should uh, be able to operate. Now, uh, we have some special kind of, uh, we have some special types of mediation and uh, looking at, uh, I don't know whether we'll get, be able to get that particular, that particular clause, but it is there that uh, some of the cases can be handed over to mediators who are not actually court annexed mediators. And I, I agreed with that. Uh, that was a nice move because when we look at the evaluation, uh, evaluative mediation, when we look at the transformative mediation, and when we look at the hybrid kinds of mediation, then you find, uh, especially on the evaluative mediation, uh, we might be lacking mediators in the court annexed who are qualified to do some certain kind of evaluative uh, mediation because this is where we need the experts like doctors, uh, like the architects. Uh, we, might need, uh, we might need people who are of a certain kind of expertise. And uh, actually I agreed with that, that uh, sometimes any qualified mediator, uh, not necessarily a court annexed mediator, uh, can be sourced from elsewhere to handle a certain case. And I believe that is why we had to, to source somebody from afar to come and mediate a Kenyan case, because maybe uh, nobody was fit enough, or uh, otherwise, if we had picked a Kenyan person, then it would have created a conflict of interest. And so sometimes we had to source people from elsewhere. And also with the hybrid cases, uh, like uh, we have to, we can have some, some mediations which will need also for that person to be an arbitrator so that he can combine mediation with arbitration. Uh, and sorry, we may not be uh, all the uh, majority Zizi. of the mediators in the court have not Zizi. actually undergone that. And so, uh, those are some of the things that we found in this document. 
and uh, the document generally is a good document. Uh, I support it. But for the into and actually rectify whatever should be amended, whatever is missing should be inserted so that it can make a perfect document. Thank you very much, Wangari. That was my findings. That was our findings. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, I hear you. I, I have paused the recording. And uh, Tabitha, we, we can see you. And we will be coming to you, Tabitha. So don't unmute us as yet. Uh, yeah, Jesse Law, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wasiliana Hub, for the chance uh, of this particular moment. I thank you so much. Uh, it's a great uh, moment that you have given us to, to actually go through this particular document. Now, my, my name is Fred Committee of uh, Yesilo Conflict Resolution Center. I am a director uh, at Yesilo Conflict Resolution Center, uh, where we deal with uh, resolution matters. And actually, uh, we deal with matters, not only mediation, but every other alternative dispute resolution matter uh, as it might come. We also deal with the training of mediators and actually even with mentorship of mediators and we can uh, be able to absorb them in uh, the Silo Conflict Resolution Center uh, with those who have an interest for studying and learning more and actually we take a mediation with a passion. Our passion is mediation because our passion is peace. And actually anybody who needs peace must uh, actually embrace mediation like we have done. And actually uh, we welcome each and everyone to uh, join Jesilo. Jesilo headquarters is in Nakuru and we are going to spread. We are continuing to spread uh, in the whole nation. So we shall be reaching you soon. Thank you. I thank you very much, uh, Fred Committee from uh, Jesilo Conflict Resolution for taking us through uh, the, uh, or giving us contributions to the discussion that uh, we have uh, with regard to the Civil Procedure Act, CAP 21, the Court Annex Mediation Rules 2020, a document which we are referring to as the Kenya post Naivasha uh, Mediation Rules Draft 1, which was circulated on 15 January uh, in uh, 2020, 2021. Um, the purpose of this discussion, which uh, we have had with the Silo Conflict Resolution, is for mediation service center leaders uh, in Kenya to review uh, the the Kenya post Naivasha Draft 1 Court Annex Mediation Rules 2020 and give us their views. From Jesse Law Conflict Resolution, we have mainly been able to pick um, the, uh, of the positives um, as contributions, areas to be worked on, and also um, some areas which are missing. Uh, key areas that uh, we have been able to uh, have highlighted relate to screening, of mediation matters and uh, the, 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 the great benefit that will come as a result of uh, the, uh, the, screen, the screening clerks uh, indicating why a file should not go to mediation. And uh, I believe this then now would be able to tie into the aspect of how we can also have more cases actually being deliberately uh, diverted into mediation, which would be beneficial um, to them. The indication of the names of the parties and also their contacts in the files as a positive and also the uh, clarity with regard to uh, the role of every person who is attending the mediation. And uh, again, also a, a positive is with regard to the consequences of non-compliance. Uh, um, in addition to that, we've also had uh, that uh, the recognition of private mediation um, uh, in, as with the assistance of a qualified mediator, uh, that it may be registered as a positive, and also the uh, aspect of immunity uh, to the mediators. Areas that need to be worked on is back again to the area of screening, 
uh, whereby uh, the, the, there is consideration to uh, the value and the nature of the case, and this is extended into uh, the contribution that then the remuneration of mediators should also take into account um, this, the, the same direction uh, as the screening criteria. Then again, the clarity with regard to when a matter is uh, tend to be a public interest matter, it should be clear whether it means that it should go to mediation or not go to mediation and uh, also possibly uh, why. Then uh, the other aspect with regard to uh, scale of payment of mediators, uh, there is need for clarity with regard to how it will be done and the uh, and, and it's being uh, made clear uh, in the document. Uh, contributions on what's missing or what could be uh, uh, included or emphasized on in the document is with regard to uh, when it comes to uh, court, to different courts we, uh, on the minimum number of cases that should be screened in a period, whether it's in terms of percentages or any other measure or uh, uh, and the reporting of uh, the reporting of uh, of such then also the need to have a mediation kitty and i trust that this would probably be uh, then uh, uh, supporting in the context of ensuring that uh, there are funds either to pay the mediators or to support um, the this process then also there is the aspect of cases that are uh, to be handled by non Court annex mediators um, up and, and, and a possible provision um, for that. So we thank uh, Jacinda Conflict Resolution. Thank you very much, Mr. Fred Committee, for uh, being with us uh, and for sharing uh, with us the thoughts uh, during this review. As is uh, our tradition, we will close this session with the words of our national anthem, Wimbo Taifa in Kiswahili. E mungu guvuyet, ilete baraka kwetu. Haki iwe ngao na mlinzi, na tukae na undugu, amani na uhuru, raha tupate na ustawi. My name is Wangari Kabiru. I have been your moderator for this session. I am the convener of the Wasilian Hub community, which is a great place to be as a mediator in Kenya and a mediator in Africa. Thank you very much for joining us and have a pleasant day.